Hello everyone, today is 26th of March, now it's uh, 20 to 11 in the morning Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my first update for a day in which I will share all the main news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets and Russian language pages on different internet platforms. Second update will be a little bit late, about 6 o'clock this uh, evening, uh, although in between two updates uh, I will upload a new episode of uh, headlines and... Uh, Later on today, about 9 o'clock this evening, I will have a live stream on my Rumble channel with Telegram Reports program and uh, I hope you will find time to join their conversation. Of course, I will inform you about live stream uh, uh, like 15, 30 minutes before uh, on my Telegram channel and uh, on the page on the page of our community on the YouTube. Uh, okay, that's been said. Let's talk about news now. And uh, because there are no reports about some crucial changes on the line of contact in the zone of special military operation, I will start uh, straight away with the media reportings uh, on some other issues. And RT's report, uh, first of all, about statements of uh, President of Russian Federation Vladimir Putin uh, about uh, uh, recent terrorist attack on, on Krokus City Hall on the outskirts of um, Moscow. Yesterday, he had a, uh, Putin had a meeting with um, high-ranking Russian officials, including uh, leaders of the security services. And well, let's go through this uh, information here. Russia knows who carried out uh, uh, Krokus City Hall attacks, but is now investigating who gave the orders, President Vladimir Putin said on Monday, pointing to Ukraine as being a possible uh, culprit. Uh, this attack was carried out by radical Islamists, Putin said uh, in the opening remarks of a video call with uh, law enforcement officials. The US and its allies are now trying to cover for, the, for their proxies in Kiev insisting that Ukraine had nothing to do with this terrorist attack and that the party responsible for uh, was Islamic State, IS or, or formerly ISIS, the Russian president noted. But we know who carried out attack. We want to know who ordered it. Russian law enforcement uh, is uh, currently looking into the perpetrators who have been apprehended and uh, brought before a judge. The investigation must be professional without any political bias, Putin stated. So he was very clear, he was very clear in his statement that, uh, first of all, investigation has to be on, on professional level without any political bias. Uh, and all conclusions have to be proven with factual evidences, which is obvious. Although, by the way, it's not just Putin. But the uh, vast majority of us here in Russia uh, have opinion that most likely, because of the many indicators, by the way, most likely the regime was behind this terrorist attack. And now it's uh, it's job of investigators to uh, to conduct investigation and uh, and uh, come up with the well proven. Uh, final um, final information and after that final conclusions and after that of course uh, decisions will be made uh, in Moscow uh, of course decisions already are made but uh, I mean if uh, if investigation will come up with conclusion that Kyiv regime and establish direct connection between Kyiv regime and this terrorist attack of course decisions probably will be made about uh, designating Ukraine secret services as, as a terrorist organizations, uh, maybe also uh, to designate leadership of the regime as a terrorist, as a, as a leaders of those, those terrorist organizations. Many other decisions also may be uh, made uh, uh, after final conclusions of their investigations. So let's let's wait. It will not take too long before we will know uh, what uh, Russian uh, security services find out about this uh, terrorist attack and masterminds of that attack. Also, TASS news agency is reporting that, according to 
Harriet uh, media outlet Ankara provided uh, Moscow with uh, all the information about two terrorist suspects that were uh, participating in attack on Crocus City Hall uh, while they were in Turkey what they were doing in Turkey for how long they stayed there so whatever information Ankara and uh, Turkish security services had that information was provided to Moscow according to Harriet and uh, uh, I guess many of you probably already see in, in different telegram channels information that was circulating yesterday uh, I didn't report uh, on that topic yesterday in my, my updates because I was waiting some uh, major media outlet here in Russia to pick up the story and and uh, further investigate but uh, unfortunately I did not see any big Russian media outlet uh, if, if any big media outlet uh, uh, published anything on the, on that matter on that matter but I will share with you that basic information that was circulating on the internet according to which according to which uh, and this is allegedly by the way because uh, I did not see official statements on this topic I did not see this uh, topic being discussed in in uh, in the media here just on independent uh, sources in on telegram and other platforms so according to that information uh, that was circulating um, Moscow provided Ankara or Turkish Turkish leadership Turkish security forces with information that they receive from uh, after the interrogation of the terrorists detained terrorists about uh, location of the uh, terrorist training ground in Turkey not far away from Istanbul and uh, after that information was transferred to uh, Turkish security services a special operation was conducted in Turkey and dozens of terrorists detained in in locations that Russian side uh, provided uh, Turkish uh, colleagues and uh, if it's correct by the way if this uh, information that is circulating on the internet is correct I would not be surprised at all if in upcoming days after Turkish specialists will conduct uh, uh, interviews with those detained uh, individuals interrogations um, maybe maybe Turkish side will make statement about uh, connection of that terrorist group that terrorist uh, uh, training ground and uh, and the key regime key regime secret services uh, main in intelligence directorate uh, of uh, Ukraine's defense ministry and SBU which is Служба безопасности Ukraine it's um, security service of uh, Ukraine that's translation so let's see uh, I'm I'm I, I think uh, we may hear very significant uh, statements from law enforcement agencies uh, not just from uh, from Russia but also from Turkey in upcoming in upcoming days and by the way if uh, uh, and Putin is absolutely correct uh, absolutely correct when he's saying that the US and its allies are now trying to cover for their proxies in Kiev insisting that Ukraine had nothing to do with the terrorist attacks and that the party responsible was solely Islamic State or ISIS uh, US and its allies definitely are conducting some cover-up operation here because it's well established it's well established that Kiev regime has a long connection with the ISIS by the way and the terrorist different terrorist groups that are operating in the, in the Middle East mainly and uh, yesterday on my telegram channel I even shared this post for example um, these pictures and videos by the way are made by Western media outlets this one for example is a uh, frame from AP's Associated uh, Press news agencies uh, video do you see this badge here of course uh, take a look at this uh, frame and this is all in Ukraine by the way do you see this budge of course uh, same story and look at this uh, video by the way uh, do you see these budgets and uh, this is uh, this video is uh, from uh, the Sun so plenty of Western media outlets depicted terrorists 
including ISIS terrorists in Ukraine, when they were uh, not even hiding, who are they? And look at these budgets, by the way. You know? And just recently, I also shared information about yet another group that was fighting in, uh, in, in ISIS, in Iraq and Syria, and that group is now in, in Ukraine and they are not hiding. They are making videos, by the way. They are making videos and publishing those videos. And one of those groups were even, even participating in recent attempts of the regime to <coughs> uh, infiltrate border with Russia and establish some footholds in, uh, in Russian settlements near, near state border. So connection between uh, ISIS uh, and, uh, and other terrorist groups that are operating in Middle East and the Kyiv are established, well established. It's factual and nothing new there. So if the uh, US wants to divert society's attention from possible involvement of Kyiv regime and said, you know what, just ISIS was involved, what you are talking about? ISIS has connection with the uh, uh, Ukraine, direct connection. ISIS fighters are fighting on behalf of Kyiv regime. And after all, ISIS itself was created by US secret services. So what we are talking about here? ISIS itself is creation of US secret services. One should always keep in mind that uh, heads of ISIS, when this group was created, all, all of them uh, were from uh, Ukraine, uh, from uh, uh, detention center. All of them were in detention center of U US militaries in Iraq. All of them. And I believe they were uh, recruited and then used to create this uh, ISIS group to uh, destroy, to, to do what they did. To destroy uh, entire Middle East. And the uh, US almost succeeded in this, by the way. They almost succeeded in it. At some point, some, uh, some additional groups were possibly created independently from US that were operating or, or mimicking IS. But IS itself was creation of US secret services and same goes for Al-Qaeda and all the branches of uh, Al-Qaeda. Also creation of CIA. And everybody knows this. This is kind of not even open secret at this point. Everyone knows this. So uh, Biden's administration definitely will fail if they want to, uh, if they want to uh, shield the regime. Uh, and uh, and misled world community that it's just ISIS and they had nothing to do with the regime. Yeah. I mean, people people are much smarter in this world than Biden administration thinks because of the you know immense influence of Western propaganda. Major, I mean, they they can uh, mislead the majority of society in the Western states. Because uh, there is no alternative information in the West. Only if you if you will start looking for alternative sources of information independently on YouTube, and then you will find, of course, many independent channels from from West, from East, from everywhere. But yet again, even biggest even biggest channels, by the way, biggest in independent sources on internet uh, cannot compare with the influence uh, to a, uh, to a MSM of the West. Western MSM is too influential, especially in the West. And that's why majority of Western society is still under influence of this propaganda. This uh, anti-Russian propaganda and the propaganda of, in general, of the Western ruling elites, globalists, and, and so on. But hopefully, hopefully more and more people will start looking for uh, alternative sources of information independently and more and more people will find these independent channels, hopefully including my uh, my channels, uh, although there are plenty others, by the way, and big names. Uh, my this media project is is tiny one compared to really, really big names. I mean, uh, Duran, uh, Greenwald, uh, Grey Zone, uh, many, many channels, by the way. If I start naming them, it, it, it will take a long time. And almost all of them, by the way, are in my recommendation list under this video in the description box. Uh, 
so if you are not familiar with with some of the independent uh, channels you can see links to those channels uh, in my recommendation list in the in the description box but anyway let's continue and uh, ria Novost is reporting that uh, yesterday afternoon by the way uh, according to ukrainian media surprising attack took place in uh, kiev missile strike from uh, from russian forces and surprising because uh, according to some reports air raid uh, sounded uh, air, air raid alert sounded in kiev uh, after almost a minute when first explosions occur and according to some other reports air raid alert was sounded just 10 20 seconds before explosions happened uh, this is uh, and that's why these strikes were surprising for for many and uh, when it comes to strikes itself um, uh, russian armed forces conducted strike on a building in central part of kiev on a building which was completely destroyed and used and was used by uh, ukraine secret services uh, yet again different channels report different uh, uh, different stuff but uh, uh, everyone is agree all channels uh, agree that uh, this this uh, uh, building was used by secret services according to some by main intelligence directorate of uh, uh, of uh, ukraine's defense ministry according to other uh, sources it was used by sbu in any case it was used by uh key regime secret uh, services and building was completely demolished no reports about uh, who was inside the building what what uh what rank they had uh, and, and so on but probably we will learn some some more about this uh, in upcoming days and also yesterday russian forces conducted simultaneously conducted strike in juliani uh, in vicinity of juliani international airport in a kiev uh, and two according to information that is available uh, two patriot air defense systems were destroyed there which is big of course which is uh, which is definitely very significant especially for frontline aviation of uh, of russia at this point at this point key regime is definitely running out of uh, air defense systems and um, if uh, nato militaries will not deploy their own air defense systems and and uh, by doing so if demilitarizing themselves if that will not happen most likely in in upcoming several weeks kill regime will will run out of air defense systems completely but anyway let's continue rianovost is reporting that uh, russian fighters uh, have now another trophy on the battlefield this time uh, uh, murder german made uh, murder infantry fighting vehicle and uh, well uh, what can i say russian military museums gonna have uh, plenty more uh exponents uh, after this conflict will end some of the russian military museums probably will need to increase their territory to displace uh, to display all all these uh, trophies that they will receive after a special military operation will end at this point almost all type of weapons are in Ru in, in russian hands as a, as a trophies from infantry fighting vehicles to western made battle tanks and uh, and so on just yesterday isn't it? i reported in, on my telegram and share video of another trophy uh, swedish made um, str 122 uh, main battle tank which is based basically on on german leopard 2a5 tank although uh, somewhat improved and modernized and that tank is also trophy uh, and every, everything else by the way i don't know if russian forces uh, evacuated destroyed the abrams tanks in berdici area but those tanks not gonna go anywhere those tanks will also end up uh, being as a, as a exponent in, in museums military museums and many other uh, vehicles also it's unfortunate it's unfortunate that um, western ruling class provoked this 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 conflict that you know anyway let's continue rian Oste is reporting that uh, according to media lci tv channel 
which is a French TV channel, I believe. Um, uh, French militaries will get engaged in uh, combat with Russian forces only in case if uh, uh, if Ukrainian armed forces will totally collapse. And uh, I don't know who gives the, this uh, media outlet, this TV station, this information. Uh, I definitely don't know what uh, plans Macron has or his generals. But what I do know is that uh, last time citizens of France were uh, fighting against Russia was uh, during the Second World War when uh, tens of thousands of uh, French nationals uh, joined German SS uh, divisions and fight against, uh, against, um, against us, against Soviet people and uh, it did not end well for uh, those French SS divisions. They were destroyed. And before that, before Second World War, French militaries were in Russia during the civil war here when Bolsheviks and the so-called White Army was fighting each other. And White Army was, uh, we can say, loyalist to the empire. And uh, Bolsheviks, we all know who Bolsheviks were. And during that time, French contingent was uh, based uh, around Odessa in the, in the southern Russia. And, uh, and the French troops uh, also ran away, by the way. It also ended uh, very badly for uh, French military. And before that, by the way, French uh, armies fought Russia during the Napoleon era. And that, and that was also not really a pleasant experience for, for French army or successful experience. And therefore, I don't know what plans Macron has, by the way, but uh, I mean, if it was up to me, I will, I will recommend Macron to uh, think again. Think again before he orders French militaries to be deployed uh, on, a, on a line of contact, because it will not end well for French soldiers. And uh, I believe it's, it's a wake, waking up call for French society, by the way. I expect m much more from French society because we are not enemies. I don't see French people as my enemies. Why should I? And I don't think French people see me as an enemy or, or my fellow citizens here. And uh, why should our armies fight each other? I mean, why? What French troops lost in, in Ukraine? What France has to do with Ukraine anyway? Uh, so, but yet again, I mean, Macron is is uh, is crazy as hell, man. Who knows what what ideas he had he has in in his brains in his uh, his sick head. So anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. Um, Borrell, by the way, head of uh, EU diplomacy, made quite interesting statements. Uh, and somewhat surprising, one may say, because he said openly what was uh, usually hide, hidden from the public. Let's go through this information. The US and EU support Ukraine not because they love the Ukrainian people, but because it serves their geopolitical interests. EU foreign policy chief Joseph Borrell told CNN on Monday, uh, appearing on Christian uh, Amanpour's show, Oh, I didn't. I was thinking Amanpour retired uh, long, uh, long ago, but she's still working. <laughs> well, uh, what a piece of uh, propaganda! Anyway, uh, appearing on the Christian Amanpour show, Borel uh, repeated uh, assertion of uh, Brussels and Washington that Ukraine was not in a way, in any way, involved in the uh, Crocus City Hall terrorist attack in Moscow and urged that U.S. to pass a 60 billion aid package for Kyiv. You know, the U.S. has a um, vested in, uh, interest in supporting Ukraine. Otherwise, we would be uh, giving a free pass to Russia. And you know what happens then? Remember Crimea, remember Syria? He told Amanpour without explaining what uh, any of that meant. 
We cannot afford Russia to win this war, otherwise the US and European interests will be very damaged, he added. It's not a matter of uh, generosity alone, it's uh, not a matter of supporting Ukraine because we love Ukrainian people. It's in our own interests and it is also in interests of the US as a global player, someone who has to be uh, perceived as a a reliable partner, a security provider to the allies. So, as I said, by the way, he's so saying openly quite part that it's not about Ukraine. They don't care about Ukraine and Ukrainians. They are using them. They are sacrificing them because they see uh, it it's fits in, in their geopolitical agenda. That's all. It fits geopolitical agenda of Western ruling class. Uh, and it's it's so obvious really i mean it's it's so obvious for everybody but still quite surprising that uh, this quite part is usually quite part uh, at least in the western media has been said openly by borel i wonder if uh, if ukrainian society will have opportunity to listen to uh, what borel said and if you are interested by the way i shared on my telegram a uh, little fragment of his uh, speech where is that? Oh, that's it, by the way. And um, I mean, you can check out uh, on my Telegram that short video. But anyway, let's continue. Ria Novosti is reporting that UN... Uh, I have to translate this information, by the way. I have to translate this information to be more precise in translation. So, UN Security Council resolution adopted on Monday on ceasefire in Gaza Strip for the months of ramadan is mandatory uh, deputy spokesperson of the organization security general fahran haq said at it in a briefing all resolutions of the un security council are international law and this resolution international law uh, uh, is like any other so they are as being as international law he emphasized so it's mandatory there was a voting process, by the way, in UN on this resolution, and surprisingly for many, US abstained. US did not veto this resolution, but abstained. Uh, I mean, this surprised uh, just about everybody. And uh, because of it, resolution uh, was adopted. And this resolution is mandatory now, and uh, both sides... Uh, Palestinian side and Israeli side basically have to uh, stop uh, hostilities, at least for a month of Ramadan. Uh, so let's see if 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 uh, conflicting sides will listen to this uh, decision and if hostilities will will stop. Let's hope so. Let's hope uh, hostilities will stop and uh, and. Uh, Negotiations will prevail and sides will release uh, hostages, detainees and uh, and we will see process of de-escalation. Let's hope that's that's what's going to happen. Although I can understand if you are somewhat skeptical of that, because I am somewhat skeptical that uh, Netanyahu's government will take in account this resolution of the UN. Let's see, time, time will tell. Anyway, let's continue. Art is reporting that Boeing CEO, by the way, steps down aimed safety crisis uh, of the Boeing planes. Um, well, uh, this is big, I guess, because Boeing is a giant, of course, in in field of uh, in field of uh, production of the aircraft, military and uh, and civilian. And uh, Boeing is failing down big, by the way. Uh, Boeing, uh, Boeing's approach to business when they are when they were trying to make as much money as possible and savings on uh, quality may bring down this company to to its knee because uh, when once customers will lose trust in, in in Boeing and that's exactly process that we are seeing now then I don't think uh, exchange of, uh, of 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 CEOs will will do much uh, 
Boeing's business model itself is is uh, not working. So, and this is big, by the way. This this is major player uh, in in that industry. And I guess Airbus, uh, European manufacturers uh, of Airbus are watching these uh, developments very closely because uh, more Boeing will fail, more money Airbus will make. And uh, on, on market right now, there are only these two giant companies that are competing with each other, Boeing and Airbus, because alternative companies like Russian companies that are producing civilian aircrafts, Chinese companies, uh, Brazilian companies, they are, I mean, they are small. They're not really competitors for Boeing and uh, Airbus right now. Maybe in 10, 15 years, 20 years, but uh, not right now. But interesting, interesting developments, by the way. Down, downfall of Boeing continues. Lentoru is reporting that uh, Elon Musk uh, is the uh, richest man in the world once again. I, I mentioned this yesterday during the headlines. And, uh, well, some people hate Elon Musk. Uh, some people see him as a, a kind of uh, hero figure, kind of real-life uh, Iron Man. <coughs> Excuse me. But whatever the case, this individual definitely is uh, someone someone with uh, special abilities. Because uh, not because he's the richest man on the planet right now, but because he created uh, extremely successful and innovative companies uh, and invested in very successful, innovative uh, companies, ideas. So. Yes, well done to him. Well done to him. What can I say? And by the way, and this guy, Elon Musk, is definitely a much uh, better person, in my my opinion, than uh, second richest guy, second richest person in the world, which is uh, Bezos, head of uh, Amazon, founder of Amazon. That Bezos is is, is something something wrong with him. <laughs> I don't like that person at all. But this one. I mean, he seems like a down-to-earth person. You know, he goes to Joe Rogan's podcast, talks about some serious and not that serious stuff. Uh, he goes to uh, some other podcasts. Uh, he's, he's acting normal, at least. Uh, when that Bezos individual is, I don't know, man. But dodgy uh, element. But anyway, anyway, let's uh, let's finish this update on this news. RT is reporting that demographics is uh, Russia's Achilles heel, uh, according to Kremlin. Improving the demographic situation and achieving uh, sustainable growth of birth rates is a matter of life and death for Russia. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said in an interview with the national media published on Tuesday. President Vladimir Putin designed 2024, a year of the family in Russia, and according to his uh, spokesman, the issue is of critical importance for the country. The demographics is probably our Achilles heel, our biggest problem. It cannot be resolved overnight, and so we desperately need to continue to take all possible measures that are aimed to correcting the demographic situation, the spokesman told the argument in the fact in newspaper, and he is absolutely correct. Russia definitely needs to deal with the uh, issue of demography. And the government does uh, quite a number of uh, programs, by the way, uh, quite a number of steps have been taken to uh, encourage families to have more kids, especially young families, which is correct direction, by the way, of course. And uh, maybe more needs to be done. Maybe even more needs to be done. And uh, I believe Kremlin is working on this topic. But also another way, by the way, and I spoke about this topic many times, another way to somewhat help uh, this situation with demog demography is to promote, to invest in promotion of Russia 
especially in the Western world, by the way, as a last stronghold of normalcy. Normality, uh, traditions and culture, by the way. And this is important, in my opinion, because many, many people, by the way, in the West are fed up with that nonsense that neolibs and globalists are pushing over the society and they are fed up that they cannot influence the situation that much in their own countries and i believe if russia will uh, deal with emigration law if russia will make it a little bit easier uh, bureaucratically uh, in, in, in step in bureaucratical steps to immigrate in russia from uh, western countries by the way uh, and if uh, some investment will be put in in uh, not necessary direct invest direct advertising that you know what guys immigrate to russia you know we are here yeah, traditionalists uh, we are encouraging normalcy you're gonna feel okay here don't do it directly do it indirectly promote this idea why kremlin is not invested in this i don't i don't know man. i don't get it while it's a huge potential i mean me personally i see huge potential here because many many people by the way i watch many western independent channels by the way i read comments people really are fed up with that nonsense that happening in the west in us by the way in european states and those people if they will have a, and members of our community by the way so many times so many members of our community commented that i mean they might consider to move to russia they are close to consider to move to russia although many people are pointing out that uh, dealing with the bureaucracy makes them you know, um, you know, makes them uh, reconsider their their thoughts to about migration to Russia, and that's why I'm saying, just open the doors, man. Open the doors to those professionals, hardworking people that has same values that we do. They are traditionalists. We are traditionalists. They uh, respect family values. We respect family values. We have so much in common, by the way. And they just make this bureaucracy easier and uh, indirectly at least uh, advertise idea that that people can emigrate in Russia if they fed up with this crazy nonsense that is that is a uh, indoctrinated Western public in, in in Western states. And tens of thousands of people will came to Russia, by the way, hundreds of thousands of people in next three to five years give it more time maybe millions of people will okay open the schools by the way to to learn the language uh, it next to embassies maybe already are you know schools there also uh school uh, internet uh, through internet can be some some uh, lessons given to learn here in russia by the way for for migrants schools that are teaching uh, language for free just create this this basis on which uh, I, and encourage people to came and i believe tens of thousands hundreds of thousands millions of people by the way will came to russia from the western states because they really fed up with with that nonsense that they see in their countries and this is huge opportunity for, for russia including to deal with the uh, issue of uh, demographics you know is it a bad idea or what i mean you tell me dear friends i mean you should share your opinion i think it's a good idea to to to, to go this way uh, also of course uh, simultaneously encouraging young families here in russia to have more kids of course but uh, uh, some other some other options also has to be considered and developed why not you know anyway anyway i don't think anybody from kremlin gonna listen to my video or, or take in account my opinion so but but i, I truly believe that this is a this is a realistic good opportunity for russia by the way because tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of law being hard working people will came here families by the way and they will have kids here also and uh, 
I mean, it, it will benefit them. It will benefit all of us, entire society here. It will benefit state in the end. So, yes, that's my take on it. And uh, by the way, I, I have to end this. Uh, I was hoping video to be a little shorter, but still it's relatively short, just 40 minutes. Hopefully you will find this update uh, interesting and informative and uh, if so, please click that like button and uh, leave some commentary just about anything, any topic, more likes and comments uh, most likely will help me to deal with algorithms on both platforms, Rumble and YouTube to reach wider audience and for very same reason, if you can, please share links to my videos or my channels with your friends on any of the platforms that you are actively using and finally, if you think this channel is interesting, useful, informative, uh, maybe even entertaining time to time, uh, and one that deserves to exist in this field of news and political commentary, please consider to support my work with small donations through PayPal, Boosty, or by subscribing to my Patreon page. You can see all the links under this video in the description box and in the pinned comment. This is it for now, have a great day and take care.